Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The team at Rocky Point Boatworks completes their 100-hour Suzuki service with fresh fuel filters and more. So there's two filters on this particular application, and uh, we're going to inspect the engine one first and then move on to the boat filter. At TRB Customs, Dale tackles the daunting task of painting faux wood on the Hydra step. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go, and for added pressure, I'm going to be film doing it for the first time. And George Labonte joins Kyle Durgeon aboard his custom 1973 Forrest Johnson Prowler. I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out. It's, uh, I don't think I would change a single thing on it. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over the top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So hopefully you've been watching the previous episodes. Today we're going to wrap up the Suzuki service. I hope you watched the oil change, the gear oil, the water pump, and the spark plugs. Today we're going to wrap up the fuel system. So there's two filters on this particular application, and uh, we're going to inspect the engine one first and then move on to the boat filter. Okay, now we're going to change the fuel filter on the motor. It has a water sensor incorporated in this filter. I have to use a pick to get the lock off of it so we can take the filter housing off. So this particular filter, we're having an issue trying to remove it. So I'm gonna remove the housing so I can literally use both hands and twist it off. This way, we don't break anything and I can inspect the filter and check for metal or debris. Now we pull this off, it's gonna be full of fuel so you try not to spill the fuel all over the boat. David, would you do me a favor? Would you dump the fuel and the fuel filter out, please? And inspect the cup for dirt and debris. Mm, oh. Looks like you got some time. Oh, look at there. Got a little something there. Like what we found here, a little debris. So in this filter, we actually found some contaminants. It's a small piece of aluminum. It's very common when you have a new boat. We find this all the time on new boats. This is why on 20-hour services, I actually replace fuel filters, and you should too. Now we've got this clean. We have our new fuel filter. We're gonna install it. I like to put a little grease on the threads so we don't have to fight it off and on every time. I also put a little on my O-ring to protect it. My assistant here keeps me supplied with rags and grease. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, fine sir. Thank you. So now we're gonna reinstall our fuel filter onto the block. The blue connector is actually for your water and fuel sensor. So we wanna make sure we reconnect this. Now I'm going to find my primer bulb. I'm going to prime the fuel system so I can put fuel in here. The reason I do that, so I can check around here for leaks. If we have any leaks, we want to fix it now before we give this boat back to the client. Okay, it's firm now. I'm checking around the filter. I notice there's no leaks. That is good. Now we're going to replace our fuel filter inside the boat, fuel filter slash water separator. So sometimes these filters tend to stick. Um, some technicians or people don't put grease on them on the O-ring, um, over tighten. Use your oil filter wrench, or yeah. I have a large set of channel locks I'll use. And if measures get very extreme, I will poke a hole with a screwdriver and try to crank it off that way. Another useful tip, if you're on a boat and you have fuel cutoff valves, shut them off before you pull this filter off, because they always leak fuel. You should have a bowl or something underneath it if, it if you can fit it underneath the filter. This one, I cannot fit one in. David's gonna fill the filter up for us. We always like to prime them first so that our client doesn't have to worry about it. I have had clients leave the dock, not prime them, and run out of fuel and have to reprime them. Not a happy client. So now we fill all filters. That's Rec 90, by the way. A little grease on it? Oh, man. Bruh. You know how it is, bro. You in the grease. We're gonna grease it. It's always best. Lovely. I only put them on hand tight. That way I can remove them 
on the next service. Sometimes if you get them too tight and you try to remove them, the whole filter housing will come off the boat. Then you will have to be fixing, repairing holes. We don't like that. So after everything's all installed, it won't hurt to go squeeze the primer ball a couple times just to make sure you got no leaks and everything's And then we'll test good. fire the motor. Yep. Once we fire it up, we look for a good stream of water coming out and... Uh... No, I just want to say, I really like these Suzuki tune-up kits. They come with everything you need. Yeah. All you have to do is add a little oil, motor oil and gear oil, yeah. and this, this is complete. I prefer it over everything else. It's good for you do-it-yourselfers out there. All right, now that we wrapped up our service, we really hope this helps you out. Until next time, take care. See you then. Yeah. When we return, TRB Customs begins the faux wood process on the HydroStep project. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. At Two Rivers Boatworks, we turn dreams into reality, one boat at a time. Specializing in the installation of the industry's leading audio, electronics, and LED lighting systems to the custom design and fabrication of dash panels, foam decking, upholstery, and more. Our experienced technicians are certified to service Mercury, Yamaha, and Suzuki outboards. New Boat Envy? Our line of custom performance skiffs can be tailored to meet your unique boating needs. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dale at TRB Customs tries his hand at full wood creation on the HydroStep project. Yeah, at TRB Customs, we're busy with our HydroStep project, which is a full faux wood boat with a retro mod look on the motor and the boat hull. I'm drawing inspiration from the old classic boats of the 20s and 30s, the, the crisscross barrel backs, the old bootleggers, you know, the old racing boats. Uh, they were these beautiful mahogany boats. Uh, I want to emulate that look, and that's what I'm going for on this HydroStep project. We've just got the boat back from the guy who's put the base coat down. I now have to do the faux process. I've decided to just do one hatch to start off with in case I screw it up. But um, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. And for added pressure, I'm going to be film doing it for the first time. I kind of figured that an important part of getting the, the wood to look realistic is the preparation of the base coat before I start laying down the faux process. I needed to sand the panel in individual planks almost, in, in individual pieces of wood. So um, I tape the panel off. I then um, take a rough scourer and I scour lines in, in the direction that wood would actually run. We've prepped it. Um, I think I'm going to now get in and start taping it out. and. Mix some colors and let's see where we get to. It's something new that I've never done before and let's just give it a go and see where we go with this. The first thing I did was the border, but it had to be made out of individual sections because that's how a real wooden panel would be made. I used a high quality sort of edging tape so that I wouldn't get any bleed underneath the tape because I remember I said I want those really crisp lines of where, where the wood joins. And then I started the faux process. Um, I've done a lot of research and I decided to use a high quality airbrush paint. I started mixing blacks and reds to give you that sort of dark, rich mahogany color. I then added some candy reds to it to give it the transparency that it needs. It came down to time that you couldn't spend any more time mixing paint. You couldn't spend any more time looking at what needs to be done. It came down to dipping that cloth and laying down some paint. And as I started doing it, I realized that the secret to making it look 
like real wood was inconsistency because real wood doesn't look the same. I, I think that's kind of where we got to quickly realize that that's how we made the wood look realistic. Going back and using darker colors and lightly running that brush to give that sort of dark grain look to the wood. Your grain runs like this and as you come along the radius, your grain pattern changes to your end grain. Your end grain is where you see the concentric rings in a tree. And I just felt that to get this right would add that realistic look to, to the finished product. So take a look at that. That end panel, I'm not sure how much you can see on camera, but it's very much starting to look like a piece of wood. Once I had this first little piece of wood done, kind of my nerves settled because there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress building up to this. This is a huge commitment to, to say, wow, I'm gonna fill a whole friggin' boat. I stepped back and I was like, okay, I've got this. So I unmasked it and got ready to do the other three sides and they became easier and I kind of started having a good feeling about that this, this project was going to work out. When we come back, George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Kyle Durgent aboard his fully restored and customized 1973 Forrest Johnson Prowler in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Surehold, clean and simple. The ultimate bucket list. Let's start with an ergonomic corrosion-free rope handle. Check. You want a caddy to organize your supplies and lift them out with ease. Check. Add in a bucket grate to elevate wash tools out of dirty water. Check. While you're at it, let's include integrated soap measuring cups. Check. How about a base that won't let your bucket scratch, tip, or slip? Check. Top it off with a secure lid that doubles as a place to sit down. Check and check. The Surehold One Bucket System. For everything on your bucket list, visit OneBucket.com. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago, and the dreams just keep getting better. Taking on a dream boat restoration project often involves a quest to find the perfect boat. And sometimes, as is the case in today's story, the boat finds you. We join Kyle Durgeon today in Stewart, Florida to have a look at just such a project that fell in his lap at a perfect time in his life and it ended up becoming a dream boat for a dive passion that's taken him through his entire life. This boat is really one you want to stick around for. Let's join Kyle and have a look at his 1973 23-foot Prowler. I grew up on the water. My grandfather had a 1977 Weber's Cove down east, and we grew up on the, on the water, you know, as, as kids from everything from running a little 13-foot Boston whaler to coming out to the sandbar every weekend, you know, come out and scrub the bottom of my grandfather's boat, you know. We thought it was the, the funnest and coolest thing to do. Um, my whole family scuba dives. My grandparents scuba dive. My father does. My mom and dad both did. So growing up about six years old, we started in the pool at my grandparents' house and then uh, kind of fell in love with it. Always thought I was going to be an astronaut growing up as a kid and then found out, you know, wasn't smart enough to do it or whatever. So <laughs> decided why not be an aquanaut. So that's uh, kind of how it started out and been doing it ever since. So I actually, I, I bought this and kind of on a whim, just kind of just sitting at a yard, at a boat yard. My buddy was building another prowler, a 32 foot prowler and this was sitting there in the, in the weeds. And I didn't even want to really actually buy the boat, but I just started thinking about it, thinking about it, and I went out there and I was helping him, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, I was like, it just struck me, I was like, I'm gonna build my own boat. So, that's kind of how I came across it. Condition of the boat, when I first picked it up, it had some trees and weeds growing in the middle of it. Basically, it was completely, almost abandoned, it had looked like, so the price of purchase was, you know, idealistic for me, but I didn't know necessarily what I was gonna get myself into. It was converted already to an outboard. The transom had not been redone or re repatched or anything, so all the through hauls and everything had already been there, so I had to come back and grind it all out, rip it out, redo it, and refiberglass and beef up the transom for an outboard to go onto it. The floor itself is all Nidacore flooring and everything. Um, everything is all composite. 
build and everything. I didn't. I wanted to stay away from wood so that way it wouldn't rot. So after I got all the glass work done, I popped the mold for you know the the, the knee and the strut for the back here, um, the dive tank racks, the the helm, the console. I never made a mold or anything like that. So you know I worked with a lot of wood and stuff, the melamine board to make the mold and the wax mold release, all that stuff. And then after that, it was basically a ton of sanding and fairing, unfortunately. But um, after that, we, I wanted to make sure that the boat looked pretty good from the outside. Inside's kind of down and dirty. Things are going to be slamming down on the tank, you know, fish, spear shafts, tanks, stuff like that. So the outside's kind of, it's all in all grip uh, paint, medium gray. And then it was off to the bracket and the hard top. And I said, I want a big platform. I want to be able to put divers on it. I want to be able to swim up on it, get, it, get the boat to have enough volume on the back of it so that way you know, coming out of the hole, it's got a ton of volume and space in the bracket itself because it's going to be loaded down with dive tanks. But it had a canvas rag top on it that was completely eroded and just completely corroded to pieces. Again, I went back to my buddy Mike and he did literally all the curves, all the lines to match the radius and the curvature and the lines of the boat. I had a vision in my head and it would have been, you know, like sticks in here, like just weld it here, do that. He literally just took it to the next level and I just made a fiberglass hard top. I wanted to go with the Suzuki because of their warranty. And then also I wanted something with a 300 horsepower with a six cylinder to try and keep down on the weight. Some horsepower to get up and go. And the fuel efficiency, I couldn't be more happy with the fuel efficiency. I averaged two and a half to 3.4 miles per gallon. And the fuel efficiency and the economical aspect of it is absolutely unremarkable. It's, it, I was absolutely blown away, fully loaded down what I was running for an MPG on the, on the outboard. I couldn't be more satisfied with it. Collectively, uh, it took about eight months to get the boat from date of purchase to out on the water running. And then uh, we've been enjoying it ever since. I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out. It's, uh, I don't think I would change a single thing on it. For the most part, it's a good sandbar boat. We'll go out fishing, family can go out, plenty of room. Um, it can hold four di divers with three tanks each or six divers at two tanks each and it's, uh, it'll accommodate pretty much all my needs for what I need. So I couldn't be happy with it. It's uh, a dream come true to be able to see from it turning from something into an abandoned boat yard to into out enjoying the time on the water. When we wrapped up our day with Kyle, we presented him with an assortment of products from our friends at Surehold, which they were happy to provide. I know this will go a long way towards keeping this boat looking its best. After an initial investment of $2,000 and spending $30,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Kyle's dream boat comes to a total of $32,000. When we return, the intricate faux wood process on the Hydra Step continues at TRB Customs. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman. Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dale at TRB Customs aims to complete his first faux wood panel with realistic perfection on the Hydra Step project. One of the things that I wanted to do on this boat was I wanted to have caulking lines. If you look at sort of the older boats, um, they would have these beautiful mahogany or teak strips laid out and then they would use, put a caulking line in the middle and I feel I'm, I was rather particular on it when I did this first one and I took my time, I, I measured it out properly and accurately, I then masked it off and I went with an airbrush to do the black section because I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. Um, I felt that if I went in here with a brush or a cloth technique or whatever, I just wasn't going to get that really nice smooth look that you get from actual caulking that's put down and then sanded over. Another part of getting the caulking done and getting it precise and accurate is the amount of taping and masking that you need to do. I made sure that everything was individually done to make sure it was super accurate. And 
it's probably the most time consuming part of this project is all the, the masking that, that I'm going to be doing. Uh, it, it's really daunting to think that I have a whole boat to do and well, how much masking tape am I gonna use doing a whole planked boat? Um, also, doing the planking, it can't all be the same. It's not a carbon copy of each one. It'll make it look fake. The whole idea was that it, it doesn't look cartoonish at the end of the day. It, it's got to look like real wood. The cloth is sort of what I use to lay the base down. I then come back with a variety of tools. I have a flogger that will add chatter marks or burlin to the wood. The flogger is also there to add that stippled finish. Um, I use two different chip brushes which I lay into with the scissors to make them sort of a little beat up. I use them to, to put the sort of black darker sections in the wood which makes it look realistic. I use a soft brush in places where I feel I need to soften the look of the wood. This is the honest truth. I literally, I was losing sleep about being able to do this, about um, I made a commitment to the TV show. I had made a commitment to my wife and business partner about doing this. So when I stepped away and I felt good about it, I felt it was really necessary to bring Kristen in and share what I'd just done. Kristen's opinion is really important to me, um, mostly because she's so brutally friggin' honest. And I brought her in and yeah, she was blown away and she was really impressed that I was able to pull it off. And to tell you the truth, I think she's probably a little relieved that I was able to pull it off. But the biggest thing that I, I, I've taken away from this is that, you know, if you're prepared to put the groundwork in and you're prepared to take a chance, chances are pretty good that you're going to be able to pull it off. Get out there and try something like this. You, you want your dash panel done, give it a free and go. If you want your transom done, give it a go. I had a lot of doubt and I put that aside and I um, approached it with an open mind and it worked for me. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The creative minds at TRB Customs move onward with the faux wood transformation on the Hydra step. George Labonte joins Captain Eric Hasty aboard his fully customized and personalized Slayer Skiff. The team at Wildfire Marine gets electrical on the Bertram 25 project. And the experts at Two Rivers Boatworks take on updating and customizing a Donzi 38 ZSF. <laughs>